Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Indy 11 podcast. I'm your host, Brendan Griffiths, and this is the show we bring on those from the world of football to show you what it takes to be in the 11 at the highest possible level. This week's guest is Danilo Rajan, who has plied his trade as a professional footballer over the past couple of years in places like Serbia, Montenegro, and Macedonia. And he is the perfect example of a story of a player who, you know, the old adage of if at first you don't succeed, you try again, right? He was a player who maybe didn't quite get the the love or the looks that he deserved in the United States, but that didn't deter him, that didn't stop him. And he was determined to find a way to get his foot in the door in professional football. And he's done just that. He's also the perfect example of a story in which sometimes when you mix just the right amount of hard work, perseverance, and a little bit of luck and a little bit of fate, good things start to happen. As you'll hear kind of the the crazy story of how he got one of his first opportunities when he made his way over to Serbia. So Looking forward to sharing this story with all of you guys. Let me kick it on over to myself. All right, ladies and gentlemen, joining us now and stepping into the 11 this week is Danilo Rajan. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for, for taking some time. I know it's busy during the season and I'm, I'm really looking forward to kind of hearing your story of your career and, and seeing what's going on in the football world for you. So thank you so much. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. Just uh, excited to tell my story and kind of give people the the real outlook on how, I mean, the real like perspective of how it is to be a professional soccer player. I've been most of the time in Eastern Europe the past four or five years. So kind of from mm-hmm. that side of the world, from this side of the world, so people can see how, what it's like and all that stuff. So thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. I mean, even if we, you know, we just spoke there for a minute, kind of before we jumped on, you know, right now you're playing in Montenegro and I think people might be shocked to even know, like you told me that you were staying in a hotel at this moment right now. So like, kind of maybe talk to me a little bit about what your current situation is and, and what's the season like, and I guess what's going on. Yeah. So I came this team, I was actually in America at the time when the, the sporting, the sporting director called me to come to the club. Uh, I was through some mutual friend in Serbia where I was playing a few, like a couple years, a couple years ago. Um, I was, ba- I was in Cleveland. I was working. I was trying. I was training in the morning, trying to work at night, trying to make some money on the side. Um, and then around January twenty first, twenty second, I headed over here. Uh, I had an agreement with the club. Didn't have to come on trial because I've been basically playing in Eastern Europe the past three years. Um, so I just came and signed the contract about three or four days later. Uh, I, I think the club said it, we were supposed to get like an apartment. The food here is good. Like I can't really complain. Like everything is yeah. good. You know what I mean? The people that run the hotel, right? So it's not too bad of a situation. Obviously, like an apartment is probably like the best thing that you like. Obviously, you have your own space and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. I've been I'm in the hotel right now, and uh, it's close to the city center, so I can't complain too much. So yeah, I'm playing in Montenegro. It's a, it's the first division. Um, been in Serbia in the first division. I've been in North Macedonia in the first division. So I kind of been hopping around like the Balkan area for the past couple yeah. of years. And uh, it's been, it's been a wild ride, man. It's, it's, I've grown a lot, seen a lot. And it's just like every day is something new and you just kind of got to deal yeah. with it uh, in good ways and bad ways. So yeah. So that's pretty much the situation yeah. right now. And it, it's fascinating to me to even hear that when you say, like you, you just laid out there, right? You, you played kind of first division Serbia. You've been at, this, at the top kind of levels of these Eastern European countries. But even when you were kind of in between contracts, it was still, you know, when you're back home training in the morning, still kind of working a job at night to, you know, just make sure that ends are meeting and, and you're ready to go back. Um, is that just kind of goes to show the, I guess the the bigger picture of professional football at certain levels, like it really has to be about the love of the game because sometimes it's not going to be million dollar contracts. Uh, I would say like the standard of living in Eastern Europe is a lot lower than it is in like America or like Western Europe. 
So for that reason alone, like the money that I'm making now in this country, like I live very well in this country, <clears throat> but it does not translate to when I go back home to America to see family, yeah. to be with friends. So any opportunity that I have kind of just to go back home and try to make some money, I try to take advantage of. So I'm not going to lie, man, for two months I was driving Uber and because it's like a way that I can pretty much be my own like I'm your, you're your own boss. You can work as much as yeah. you want. You can make as much money as you want. I could train at 10 in the morning and then work four or five hours, uh, yeah. basically like at night and make 50 bucks, 200 bucks if need, you know what I mean? If I need to. So yeah. it was, it was actually like the perfect, it was the perfect gig for me because I'm pretty, I'm, I'm a pretty disciplined guy. So, um, so yeah. So, I mean, the money that I was making here in Eastern Europe, I was living pretty well here, but well, like I said, when I, when I went back home and to America, it was kind of, it didn't translate. And plus there are some financial situations that I had with the previous club that I was at. So I had to kind of sort that out and eventually that all got sorted out. So in the meantime, I was like, all right, let's pick up a side gig. So I'm, so I can live comfortably, you know what I mean? So I don't have to be yeah. like kind of live paycheck to paycheck and all that stuff. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. I'm super curious though, to kind of build the, or, you know, set the story here kind of, and figure out, you know, how you even got over here, um, in these different countries, you know, playing at, at the top level here in kind of Eastern Europe. Um, you mentioned to me kind of, before we jumped on there originally from Cleveland, and I saw that you went to kind of your hometown university, um, right out of high school, maybe talk to me a little bit about your yeah. youth career and kind of that stage of going into college. Yeah, so I think I started to play at this uh, the Internationals Academy. It was in the it was one of, like the, one of those academy teams. The they're like the a lot of those teams are affiliated with MLS teams. Um, the Internationals. It was like a Northeast Ohio based team. Uh, the owner was a Macedonian guy, knew Serbian, knew my dad. I ended up just kind of going to the tryout, and I did really well. Uh, eventually, I mean, if you if you if you play in one of those academy teams, uh, you got like a 95% shot of uh, probably getting a college contract. I mean, a college, like, uh, scholarship. Yeah. So, not going to lie, like, I played basketball until I was 18 years old, too. So, I was playing in high school, and I was playing in the academy, soccer. And I'm, like, I was pretty good at basketball. So, I was, like, in Northeast Ohio, was, like, the first all, one of, like, so, like in one of the newspapers, like, Northeast Ohio, first team, all-star, all was playing at Cleveland State University. Uh, they offered me a co uh, scholarship. I knew the coach. Uh, did really well over there. Uh, first, my freshman year, it was Division One. Made it to the tournament. Got 18 games in. Starter. I think I played the most. I started the most games as a freshman, which was pretty good. Uh, also, I knew the coach from Akron University. And eventually, Akron, obviously, is one of the top uh, co like college soccer programs in the country. So... I eventually kind of got connected with one of those. I mean, it wasn't like I just kind of ended up going to Akron after two years of doing really well at Cleveland State. Um, and then at Akron, uh, my first year, I had injury issues. Um, it was more concussion based. I had like a concussion. I kind of just had migraines for a, a period of time. And the unfortunate thing about college soccer is like the season can last three and a half months. So if you have like a pretty significant injury, I mean, it's it's not like an ACL or something. Like if you're out for like a month, month and a half, two months, it's better to redshirt. So I, I ended up redshirting that year. And uh, the next year ended up making it. We ended up making it to the final four, played against Stanford, uh, did really well against Jordan Morris, uh, the forward that plays for the U.S. national team. And he's I think he's in Seattle now. And I did really well against him, so that kind of opened up doors for me yeah. uh, going into my senior year. And then my senior year, uh, we were preseason number one in the country. Uh, we had a lot, a, a lot of really good players. We had guys from uh, the Barcelona Academy, Corinthians Academy team in Brazil. Uh, one of my buddies just played in the World Cup that I play with. He has a contract with Nottingham Forest. Uh, a couple guys now playing in the MLS, Colorado. Uh, Pretty much all of us had like opportunities to go play professional soccer, so the 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 atmosphere there was pretty awesome. It was it was really cool. Um, so yeah, so then eventually my senior year, last 
month this season, again, I had another injury that I couldn't like kind of shake. So eventually got in- invited the MLS combine. Yeah. I'm just kind of like telling the whole story now, if that's all right. Like, I'm just kind of, sorry. Like, I know you talk about the. No, no, no. It's all right. I like it. Yeah. It's the college exit, but it's just like all connected. So I ended up getting, I got invited uh, from the college, yeah. uh, from my college, like the way I played and all that stuff. I got invited to the MLS draft, the combine, which was out in uh, LA. Uh, if I'm being honest with you, that is just like, the way they set it up is like, it's not easy, man. You play three games in like five or six days in front yeah. of the whole MLS GMs, coaches. I played like 90 minutes, two games and like, like two full games in like 45 minutes. And I won like 40, like one half I had to play left back. I never played left back in my life. So it was just like, it's like what you're at. You're like, what the fuck, dude? You know what I mean? Like this can make or break you. And then it's just like they're kind of yeah. setting yeah. you up to be like, look slow. Uh, you had to, I had to travel all the way to LA. Time change. It's, it's like not easy. So it's. I thought I played really well. Like I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not arrogant, but like I thought I was like from a soccer standpoint. One guy called me eventually when I got connected with Cosmos. He's like, I thought you were the second best center back at the combine. I think my problem was just like. You got all these, I don't know if you watch, like, obviously you're pretty aware of the NFL. There's, like, the NFL combine, the running, the jumping, all that stuff. I mean, I'm, like, fast. I'm, like, I can jump, but, like, I'm more functional in that aspect, not, like, a stop-start. You know? Oh, so you guys did all that stuff, like, the physical testing? Yeah, so that, like, dude, like, some guys did unreal in that, wow. and they got drafted top 10 because they were on, like, f- like freakish ass. And I was just like, what the f-? And I was like yeah. sitting there. And I thought from a soccer standpoint, I came from Akron. Obviously, Akron's like, I don't know, I'm not sure if you're aware, but like through 2010 to 2020, like it was probably like the best college soccer program in the country for pro- yeah. developing professional. Far and away, yeah. Guys. I mean, we got guys probably in that 10-year period, a couple guys had Premier League contracts, one guy Italian league. I mean, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's a good school. So... Big time, yeah. And a lot of this, and I'm, I'm not even like, I mean, even like at the professional level, like I don't even know if I've ever had that type of experience, that type of professionalism from wherever I've been. So I, really? I'm, I was pretty grateful to go to Akron and just kind of get that understanding with soccer uh, over there. And then eventually I, got, eventually I ended up getting drafted by Houston in the second round. Um, so, yeah, so that kind of, me getting drafted was kind of like just me – the end of my college career. So then that's got, you asked me about the college, so I can get, I can delve into the professional aspect of it and all that stuff. If you want, like, obviously, I don't know, you might have different questions, but ended up. Uh, so yeah, so the beginning kind of went to my hometown, did really well, started playing college soccer year round. And that's kind of when I exploded and fortunate enough, I ended up going to Akron and uh, ended up getting drafted by Houston. So yeah, that's kind of the, uh, that's kind of my whole college career in like a five, 10 minute ex- yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I think I was definitely curious to ask you about your Akron experience because I remember, you know, around that time, Akron being kind of like that was the peak of their powers. And, and that was there were just players upon players that were kind of being pumped out of that program. Um, and kind of the way you described it there, just the atmosphere, I'm sure every day, day in, day out of training, it's like you got top level guys who are going on to be a pro. Like, it kind of just forces you to rise to the level. Right. Um, but I'm really curious about the draft process. because I think like everyone has such a different experience with it. And I think it's, I think it's very different than other sports in America. Like just from an outside perspective, it, it doesn't seem the way, you know, the NFL draft works or the NBA draft or, you know, anything like that. So like after you get, uh, you know, go to the combine, like what's kind of the process next? Like, are you, on the phone with teams or are you on the phone with agents? Like, can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah. So when you're at the draft, uh, like the GMs and so I had at that time, I kind of had like a verbal agreement with one agent. So, uh, basically when you get to the draft, you, you have to do some, like, I mean, you kind of just give out your information. You have like a, a physical, give out your number. So teams have your number. So basically, after the first or second game, I think it was the more more so the second game, teams started texting me. 
So I had about five teams, I think, that ended up texting me to have a meeting. Uh, so I had a, like a basically a meeting with, I think it was Kansas City, Houston, New York Red Bulls. Yeah, at the time, San Antonio was trying to get into the MLS, so they invited them to like interview players. And I forgot one more MLS team. It was Atlanta United. It was Atlanta United. So uh, ended up having a conversation with those guys. It's just kind of like they want to get to know who you are. I remember like going into Kansas City. The guy that is the assistant coach of Kansas City is a Serbian guy, and I think we I I knew I knew. Like, we knew each other, like, even before I had the meeting. So, like, right away when you get in the Kansas City uh, meeting, they ask you, like, uh, love to win or, like, hate to lose. So, it's, like, literally, like, they say what's up, and then you automatically, like, on the spot, like, you have to think of an answer. And I don't know how this, like, I whipped this out of my ass. Like, I was just kind of, like, uh, <laughs> hate to win because I expect – no, hate to lose because I expect to win. And then they were like, good answer. <laughs> so I was, then after that, it was like, I kind of just was like, yeah, I'm like feeling it in this interview. Uh, sometimes like Houston, I remember the team that I got drafted to, I had like 12 guys around me. And it was just like, this guy asked me a question. This guy asked me a question. It was just like constant, like just, it was pressure. You know what I mean? It was like interview for like the CIA or something. Yeah. Like what's going on? Kansas City, Kansas City was a good interview. I thought it was just really laid back. New York Red Bulls, I thought it was a really good interview as well. Good people, um, and I just kind of felt. I mean, it was everyone was a good, like everyone was cool. You know what I mean? So I didn't really have any like no yeah. complaints about it. So eventually, after the second game, people texted me, and then after that, man, you're just kind of like you play one more game, and if they see that you're gonna be like a first round pick, they'll be like, yeah, like stay a couple more days for the draft. So you can get a picture with like the scarf and all that stuff. So I was like, so no one told me about it. And I already, I think the league already booked my flight back home to Cleveland. So I kind of just watched the whole like MLS draft from like my family room with my sister, my dad, and my mom. Funny enough, I just kind of had a feeling like I, my mom was like, where, where are you going? Like I said, I'm going second round Houston. Like, I don't know why. And I went second round Houston. Like I just had a feeling she told me, she's like, everything you said you're going to do, like, you ended up doing. So I was, she was like, so she printed off, like, the Houston Dynamo logo. So right when they drafted me, she handed it to me. She took a picture. I was like, oh, did you, like, print off, like, the New York one as well? Because I thought maybe New York was in the picture as well. She's like, no, you just said Houston. So I just printed that one off. So I was like, all right. So uh, <laughs> so I got I got drafted by them. They, they're supposed to fly you out, but I had a car, and I was like, Dude, like I, I'm like the hotel or whatever they're they put me up in. Like I needed to have a like a car to go travel. So I kind of me and my mom, she was like we just booked it down there. Took a, I mean obviously it was like it was an 18 hour trip, but I mean I was just like I wanted to have my car so I can just go to restaurants so I can live. You know what I mean? Like I just want to sit in the hotel the entire time. So uh, eventually went all the way down to Houston yeah. and started preseason with them, and then that is uh so that's kind of how the whole all-star process i mean the mls draft process i had one of my teammates uh jonathan lewis he's in colorado right now he kind of had like a he did really well at the at the combine and he did really well his freshman year at akron so he's a Adidas generation contract player so he had he had a lot of interviews man so mm -hmm. he was like 10 15 interviews i think so he ended up getting drafted third or fourth and uh i think he went to new york city fc so yeah, so he, so I mean, everyone's draft uh, experience is different, and yeah, so I can, so that's kind of everything that happened with the drafts, and then I can kind of get into the preseason with Houston and how kind of my career just started at the professional level. So, if you want, yeah, and so you don't really like when you have those discussions with those teams they don't really give you an insight into like, Hey, so yeah, we're thinking about taking you like, there's no real kind of like, once you left the combine, there was no real like confirmation of anything, right. It's still kind of just up to the teams. Like you have a vibe, you have a good feeling maybe, but that's really all that you're left with. Right. So, I mean, you kind of got a feeling like if they called you that they might take you, you know what I mean? Which, yeah. I mean, like, even like, it's just like, it's kind of pissing me off as well. Like MLS teams, uh, 
like even during my draft, they had picks like for I don't even know what team. I'm not saying like for example, I'm just gonna throw it out like Seattle had a pick or whatever. And they didn't even like in the sec third round or fourth round and they just passed. You know what I mean? And it's like why, dude? Yeah. Like why pass the pick? You know what I mean? Like you can make a difference in some guy's life. Yeah. You can give him a shot. Like who knows, man? You know what I mean? Like you know how it is in the college. Like there's yeah. two hundred teams. The only reason why I probably got saw I got seen was because I did really well against Jordan Morris in the final four with Akron. You know what I mean? Like if I didn't have that opportunity, who knows if I would even gotten to the MLS draft, you know? So like that kind of pisses me off about like when I would see teams pick like skip picks and I was like, dude, like just take the guy, you know what I mean? Like you never know. And that kind of like that, that ruffled my feathers a little bit because I saw some like, some guys that I played with didn't even get picked, and like they went all the way to LA. You got to play three games in five days. You got to do the athletic tests. You got to sleep in a hotel with a guy. It's just like, it's not like you're set up to fail, but it's not an easy process. You know what I mean? So like, some guys can have a bad day. Yeah. It's like their career's over. You know? So it's like that kind of that that in a way is, I would say the college game is getting. Uh, it's a lot difficult. It's more difficult to go play college and go play. Uh, in the MLS now than it was 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And I think a lot of the MLS players, unless you're not playing an act, an academy, uh, like there are a lot of foreign guys are coming in, which is part of the reason why I was like, fuck this dude. Like I'm getting out of here. I need to go play in Europe because I wouldn't, I'm telling you right now, I'll get into, I'll get into my whole like professional experience. But I mean, man, it, it wasn't easy. Like I was on top of the world, got drafted by Houston and, my experience, I would say, wasn't the most – it was the greatest. You know what I mean? Obviously, whatever happens in life, I'm grateful because it's like oh, you got to learn. You got you to teach. Yeah. It shows what kind of character you have. So, I mean, me ending up mm. in Eastern Europe was like the best thing ever because I love, I love Eastern Europe. Like the lifestyle, the people, it's different. So I'm grateful I ended up coming here. But at the time being, man, it was like – it was not an easy. It was not easy at all. So, I'll I'll get into Houston and all that stuff. Yeah. So I'm just I'm gonna give you time to kind of comment on everything that I've said. So, because I'm sure you have your own opinions as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I definitely can resonate with a lot of what you're saying. Like obviously, you know, for me, I wasn't a player that was even kind of sniffing the same levels as you, right? Like there, I wasn't in and around the MLS circles, right? But I I kind of. I don't know. I felt a certain type of way too about the American system that it just felt like, okay, like they're rewarding young American players that are coming up through the academies um, and they're kind of getting opportunities. Right. And then, like you said, they're bringing in a lot of foreigners, like those big, you know, designated players, those big contracts for these MLS teams, you know, it's very rare that it seems like it's going to American guys. And, and maybe that's just my perception and maybe I'm wrong, but I completely get that. And and I agree with you as, as well with the, the uh, draft process too, like to just pass on a pick. Right. And I'm sure you'll describe this to us as well. You getting selected by the dynamo wasn't them giving you a contract for the first team, right? Like that was just a pick and then you got a preseason invite and, and there were steps after that. So if you give a kid a chance, you know, what's the worst that can happen. You can still tell them no after two weeks of preseason, but instead it's like, can't even really bother to show up and take the pick. So I get it. But I mean, if, if we're going to do the whole American soccer thing, we might be here for a while. So got trust it. me, though, I understand. You got to get down the rabbit hole with that, dude. That's just like, that's a path we don't want to take right now. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I, I don't know, man. I just kind of respect. Listen, I, I think the American, there's a lot of really good players in America that just fall, that aren't getting utilized or whatever, like, I kind of came into Serbia, Montenegro, and Macedonia, and I just done really well. In like the teams that I've been playing, it's tough. It's tough for an American guy to come in and just go play with like one of the top teams. And I kind of just sorted that out by myself. By myself, so it's kind of so I kind of been like hanging out with the teams that are always like promotion relegation. But individually, I thought I've always done well for myself. But but yeah, no. So that's kind of I just I don't know. I hope there's just more chances for American players coming through because I think there's a lot of good American players coming through the system and they get overlooked by these foreign guys coming. So I know it's a way to build a league and they've done a really good job building MLS. I mean, it's one of the, I would say it's one of the top seven leagues maybe in the world, sixth maybe. I think it's getting close to six, 
the, the Italian league as well. Like, there's a lot of good players in the MLS. So, yeah, so that's pretty much everything. So I can dive into Houston, and I, I could just kind of dive into the yeah aspect of it. So soon, if you want, yeah. Yeah, so talk to me about uh, about the Houston processing, I guess, kind of what, you know, followed after getting selected by them. Right, so uh, you get selected by them. Um, I came in as a center back. I've never really – a center back or, like, a holding mid. I played holding mid. I was first year at college for the first half season. And I'm getting pushed back to center back. And then that's kind of just when I took off because center back – I'm good with the ball, read the game well, good jump. I can jump pretty well, and I'm fast for a center back. So, um, eventually, Houston ended up playing me at left back. I'm not even left-footed. So, I was just like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? So, and that was like the first two, that was like the first two weeks. And they and they sent me down to like the, the second team after two and a half weeks. And I was fucking pissed. Like, I was not. I'm like, dude, where, how can I showcase myself if you're putting me at a left back and I never played left back in my life? You know what I mean? And am I even left footed? I'm a center back or a holding mid. Like, that's it. Like, those are the positions. And I started to get, like, I started to get the hang of it. Like, I started to get, like, you have, like, two weeks kind of just, like, to figure it out. If you, if you're not doing it, if you don't do well, like, with two weeks, like, you're done, dude. Like, they won't, they'll, they'll ship you out to the, the second team. So, did I play well? I, I can honestly say I didn't. But can I, I I can honestly sit here and say, like, to you that I just never felt like I had a shot with Houston. So eventually, so eventually I get, to, I get, uh, I get shipped down to the second team. It's in McAllen, Texas. It was after like three weeks, maybe four weeks. I'm not even sure. I think it was, it was like the third week. And I told my agent, I was like, dude, like, what the hell is this? Like, they didn't even, they like play me at left back. I mean, it's different. You play me at right back. At least I'm right footed. But you play me at left back. Like, I'm not Maldini. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like that. That style of soccer, where like you just need to defend more. Like now, a left back is more Marcelo, more like like a winger type. You know what I mean? So, it's not easy. Yeah. Not easy to go from center back and play outside back. I would say so. My agent was like, "No, go to second team." It'll be all right. Like the guy that the coach likes, he's going to keep you. So the coach actually liked me. He told me we we're going to keep you. Uh, eventually I kept playing with the the second team. It was in McAllen, Texas. Dude, it was like a hundred degrees in February. And it's just like, that's something you got to get used to as well. So like I'm, I'm coming from Cleveland, Ohio, uh, where it's like snowing and I got to go all the way down to McAllen, Texas I thought I did pretty well. Did I play my best? No, I probably, I could, I could, I definitely know I could play better, but I thought I definitely did enough just to like, so the coach wanted to keep me from what I heard. It was the first team, the, the director and all that stuff. That was like, yeah, we don't want him anymore, which fucking pissed me off because the first two weeks, two and a half weeks, everything they saw me was playing left back outside of my position. So it was just kind of like, so I was really disappointed with the whole Houston situation. Um, a lot of the guys that, I mean, like the center backs that were there at Houston, the one dude had 10 years experience playing in Real Madrid B, the B team. Other guy was like the Panama national team played in Costa Rica, uh, played in the world cup. Other guy was like uh, a Brazilian guy played with Beckham at LA won like two or three cups. The other guy was like a 10 year MLS vet, other center backs. So like, I didn't really have like, that's why they put me at left back. And Marcus Beasley was still like under contract negotiation. So like, that's why I was just kind of like filling a role, you know? So I don't know, man, mm. it was just kind of, that kind of frustrated me. And then they let me go. The second team, the guy, the coach, like, listen, like I wanted to keep you, but the first team was like, so who knows if he's lying as well. Like, I don't really, I don't know. At that point I was like, I'm on yeah. Allen. I'm like, thank God. Like, that's literally like Trump is building the wall in your backyard. Like, that's literally where you're living. Like, you're living <laughs> by the by the by like Mexico, America, by the by the border. So it was super yeah. hot. Like, I remember I, I got yeah. to a gas station getting water, and I was just like, the ladies just speaking Spanish to me, and I'm like, I spoke Spanish in like high school, so I knew what you're saying, but like, I was like, what the hell is this? So that's it was definitely a culture shock. Definitely a temperature thing that you had to get used to as well. But 
I just, I don't know, man. That whole experience was just, for me, it was just very disappointing, I would say. And then after that, uh, one of the guys that was coaching me at the MLS Combine, he was my head coach. He was the coach at Columbia. Uh, I forgot his name, Kevin. I don't know if it was Kevin. It was something, Kevin something. Kevin, I don't know, I forgot his last name. He was a good guy, uh, called me, good, really connected with the New York Cosmos. Uh, he said, come to the Cosmos, like, we will give you a contract. You'll be more with the first team. They're trying to get, like, a younger guy coming in. So I was like, all right. So eventually, I actually declined the offer. I, my agent called me. I declined the offer. I just – that I my intuition was saying, let's go to Europe. And that's kind of – so I, then, I declined it. The guy called me, talked to me, and I, I took the offer after he called me again. So – um, eventually I go to New York, basically like from what I, what I was told, like I was going to be with the first team all the time that ended up not happening. So I signed a contract with the first team. Mm -hmm. There was already one of the center backs was hurt during the first two weeks. I thought I was doing pretty well. Like the first couple weeks, all the other center backs were like experienced 10 year guys, 31, third, like 28, 36. One guy was from like Kenya, 26, 27. I'm coming in at 22, 23 years old. No professional experience. So, uh, was doing really well the first couple of weeks. The guy came back from injury, and then I was just like, I ended up just staying with the second team most of the time, play, getting games, and whenever they needed more players, they'd call me. And I was playing left back, right back. Like, every day was just like a different position. So, I'm like so I'm like sitting there. I'm play, I did pretty well with the second team. I was playing games. Uh, we played a game in Canada against Valencia. It was a friendly game. I was on the bench. And we won two nothing. I didn't. I didn't play, but like I saw, those were guys that were like Simone Zaza, big Italian, big Italian forward, played in the World Cup. I think played in the Euros. Danny Parejo, Spanish guy, stud, like holding midfielder. Montoya, the right back that played for Barcelona. Uh, he was playing in that game, dude. I'm telling you right fucking now, dude. These guys, you got one player or two players in every fucking team that will play the piano. Everyone else holds the piano for those guys. You understand what I'm saying? Like I, yeah. they, I was, <laughs> yeah. I was impressed. There was like two guys. Everyone else, sharp passes, physically fit, did their job, concentrated. That you know what I'm saying? Like that's how. Like there was like out yeah. of the eleven guys, two of those guys, one or two of those guys were like, wow. Everyone else is like, you know what I mean? Like, all right, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that game was like pretty pretty eye-opening for me because I was like, dude, like, yes, there there's levels to this, but like the highest, highest level is reachable. Does that make sense? That's what I thought. So yeah. I eventually kind of was just like, I, I had like these, these USL teams were calling me for like trials and stuff. Dude, these USL trials, you got 60 guys, 70 guys coming to these trials, and they pick one guy. And I'm sitting there, oh my and, God. I, and I'm, like, doing well, and I'm, like, and I'm like sitting in Nashville, Pittsburgh. I don't even know where else I went. And I thought, like, center back, I was one of the best guys. But, like, dude, where, like, I, like if they're not looking for that position, you're just basically there to fill a spot. Yeah. So I, like, man, I'm telling you, like, the whole system after, like, I got drafted, I was just kind of disappointed with it, so – Eventually, like, this one guy called me, like, maybe Kansas City, too. And I'm just like, screw this, man. Like, I didn't listen to my gut when I uh, declined the offer from New York. I, you know what I mean? Like, I kind of listened to someone else. Mm. And I didn't want to do that again. So, I'm like, I'm just going to Europe. I had a buddy that was playing in Germany and was working, ended up making enough money. I'll, now, that's kind of the whole US, my whole U.S. experience. Now, I can, I can jump into the European experience. Yeah. Um, something in Europe, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'm just gonna, yeah. So that's my U.S. experience. I, I'm gonna let you comment or do whatever, whatever you need to do from, that. <laughs> and then we can jump into the European experience if you want. So, yeah, I think it's interesting what you mentioned about the game with Valencia, and I wonder if that also was another factor in kind of leading you that much more into Europe because I think. It's One something that I felt like yeah. when I when I went to Europe, like 
there was such more of a recognition and an appreciation for players like that. And they kind of understood that right there. Yeah. And every team, there's going to be guys that can change the game and, and are truly special. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of guys that just make the game tick and they make it, they push the game forward. Right. But they might not do the special things. And I think, I don't know. In my experience, I felt like a lot of times in certain teams I've been a part of in the States, it's like all 11 guys felt the need to try and be that guy a little bit. Right. <laughs> and then in Europe, it's like, no, it's okay. If you're just a guy that can, that keeps possession for us 90% of the time. Right. Um, so I imagine when you're experiencing that, you see the European stage and then too, like you said, you're showing up to tryouts in the States and it's like 60, 70 guys. And you're like, all right, I feel like there has to be a different way. So what's that like? You just call it kind of your buddy in Germany and you're like, hey, let's, let's see what we can do. So this guy, he went to my high school and he ended up like paving his own way in Germany. Like I think it was fourth division, third division, fourth division in Germany is still a very good level. Like it's, it's pretty high quality. Those are the younger, t uh, younger, like Bayern Munich to Dortmund to those are cause that they're still amateur uh, teams, but that's the highest amateur. Mm. The first division, the third division, that's a professional rank. So all those second teams from Bayern, Dortmund, uh, all those like Bundesliga teams, like Hertha Berlin, those teams are basically playing in the fourth division. So, you got a lot of good talent, a lot of good mm -hmm. players. So eventually, I my buddy was like, it's easiest to come in the summer. So I was like, all right. Was working, was coaching. Uh, ended up kind of like being like, I swear to God, like a background actor in like this one movie on Netflix. Uh, got like, four, <laughs> got like 450, got 450 bucks. My buddy was kind of being like hesitant because I don't think he was like sure if he could hook something up with me. But at that point, I had money. I was like, fuck it. I'm just coming. So uh, there was that one company, yeah. Wow Airlines. I think it was Wow, where you can literally just get to Europe for like 150 bucks. Like, it was just like, so I was like, I just need to get there. So uh, I think I flew, yeah. into, I flew into Frankfurt. And then from Frankfurt, what was it to Berlin, man? I don't know. It was, it was like maybe Berlin, I think I flew into. And then he was in Leipzig. So I took a bus from Berlin to Leipzig and he was waiting for me there. So within like the first three hours of landing, his team had a practice and I just started practicing with him. So then I, the next day or two days later, they had like a friendly, that team was fourth division. So they, did, and he was the foreign spot. I think you only had one foreign spot that they could have. So I was just there just to get my feet wet kind of. And uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so eventually I played in that friendly game, 45 minutes, did pretty well. Uh, played another, like, friendly game after that, did really, did well in that. But the coach was like, listen, like, we're going to keep him. He's the one foreign spot. And then I was like, all right, whatever. So I ended up, uh, my buddy, he had a girlfriend at the time. The apartment wasn't big. So I ended up s spending, like, a month in a hostel in Leipzig just waiting for a shot. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up going to this other Eastern, uh, East Germany kind of village, dude. There wasn't like, it was like, I like soccer. I like playing and all that stuff. But I was like, dude, I got to have something outside of soccer where there's like cafes. There's like life. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need to be in a big city. Dude, this place had, yeah. this place had nothing. So I was with the team a couple of days, yeah. played a friendly, uh, did well in the friendly. They wanted to see me another week. Then eventually I told my buddy and the agent that kind of like hooked me up with this. I was like, dude, I can't live here, man. So I just picked up my stuff and I went back to Leipzig. Uh, that's honest. It's honestly got truth. Like the agent got pissed at me because he thought I like screwed him up, screwed him over a little bit. So he didn't even want to work with me anymore. I was like, dude, I didn't screw. Like, I told, I told the coach, I was like, dude, I just, I like soccer, but not enough money. And the city's just not for me. You know what I mean? So um, eventually, yeah. eventually went back to Leipzig, was in that hostel and I'm just like waiting, waiting, waiting. And I see one of my buddies hit like now the story fucking starts. Like this is like, this is like the story. This is where like one coincidence happens after another coincidence. This is like, this is kind of where the crazy stuff happens. So my buddy that I played in the academy with in Cleveland, he was in Slovenia at the time playing in first division. He had a connection with this one Serbian guy from Cleveland. So he's like, I'll give you his number. He'll hook you up. So I called him. 
He goes, go to Serbia, Belgrade, Serbia. Belgrade is basically, it's a capital of Serbia. It's, it's like probably the center. It's not the center of Eastern Europe, but it's like kind of like the hot spot of Eastern Europe. Everything happens in Belgrade. Like it's, it's a cool city, awesome city. I lived there for two and a half, three years. It's awesome. Like I love it. So ended up getting a ticket. I have a lot of family in that city area, in that city as well. So I knew I had a place to stay if when I ended up going there. So uh, yeah. buy a ticket from Germany to Belgrad. The guy that the connection that I had, he said that a guy's going to be waiting for me at this one club. I get to the club. The guy has no idea who I am. So I ended up going to Germany, not, <laughs> not having anything, uh, nothing really like concrete. Uh, ended up going to Belgrade, to Serbia. Again, nothing really concrete. Uh, now you'll hear like where like kind of fate, like just kind of plays its role. Um, so I was at my aunt's mm. place at the time and I needed a taxi. And my, my cousin who lives like close to like the big church, one of the biggest churches in like all of Eastern Europe. Uh, he li- He's like, let's go to get lunch. And he speaks English. So at the time I didn't really know Serbian. So I, I go to the taxi and I just show him the address. I'm like, I need to go to this place. And he goes, all right. So drops me off. I don't have Serbian number. I don't have internet. I have nothing. So I'm like trying to find my cousin because he's like, this is where you got to need to get dropped off. I'm like, okay, I paid the guy. I'm going up and down the street for like 10 minutes, dude. I have no idea where my cousin is. So this one guy sees me in this one cafe and he goes, and he goes, you need help in Serbian. And I'm like butchering Serbian, like, cause my, my family's from here. So I knew like 10%, like I understood maybe 50%, but speaking, I was terrible. So I told him, I was like, need this, I need this street. And he goes, you're just like one street over. I was like, all right, perfect. Thank you. And he, he asked me why you're here. And I said, because of like family and because of like football, which soccer, basically you say football. He goes, he goes, football. He goes, come here. And this cafe is probably like the size of like a, ho- like a hotel room. So I'm like, what the fuck is this, dude? So, yeah. so this guy uh, <laughs> starts, starts asking me questions like, where'd you play? Like, you got any videos? I show him the videos from my college. Like, I, they're good videos. He goes, they're good videos. So thank you. I said, I just need a place to play. It doesn't matter. I'll play in the third division. I'll work my way up. So eventually this guy ended up being like, he was, he was one of like the vice presidents of like the top league in Serbia, like 10 years ago. And he was one of the owners of one of the top teams in Serbia, like 10, 15 years. So crazy, like by chance ended up meeting this guy. Right. So, yeah. So for a month, me and this guy, I didn't have Serbian citizenship at the time. So for a month, me and this guy are trying to chase teams, right? All those teams went through preseason. In Serbia, there's not a lot of money. So if they give a guy a contract, they're pretty much like, it's tough to to get into a team after preseason. So because there's not financially stable, they can't just buy whoever they want and just be like, all right, well, they'll be like, all right, well, we already gave this guy this amount of money, like, you know what I mean? Like we can't risk it giving more money to this guy. You know what I mean? So ended up, hmm. uh, it was like the August, like 28th, 26th, 27th. We went to, I went to this one city, uh, played like one day in front of the president and he goes, I want you. So I was like, all right, no problem. So brought my passport in. The problem was because I didn't have Serbian citizenship. It, the process to register a foreign player takes longer. So they couldn't finish the registration. So the transfer window closed 31st. They couldn't register me. So I was like, Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? I was like, I just like, I was like in my head. Like, I remember when he told me you're going to get the contract. I'm like, dude, I want to go play second division in like Europe because I fucking found some guy in a cafe because the taxi driver. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so eventually that kind of fell through. Uh, ended up staying in Belgrade for like a couple more weeks because I really love the city and I just wanted to like experience it. Not as like through my family, but just like a person that lives there. So I ended up going to one of my aunt's place. She called me over one night and she was like, listen, I can get you Serbian citizenship uh, because your grandma was from, she was born in that area. So I was like, all right, perfect. Because it would be a lot easier. I told the guy, he's like, he told me, he's like, it'd be a lot easier if you had Serbian citizenship to go play in Serbia. I was like, perfect. So eventually I finished all the paperwork uh, I thought I finished all the paperwork. There's this thing in like Serbia where like you're always missing one paper, always missing one paper. Like you turn everything in and they'll lose a piece of paper and you got to turn that paper back in. So this was about 
I don't even know. This is like around 2018, I think. Yeah, so this is around 2018. My, I go, so I finish all the paperwork to, I submit all the paperwork for the passport, serving citizenship. I go back home. I work at UPS. I work for UPS seasonal because no one would want to take me for a month and a half, two months. So I am fucking running in snow, rain, sun, ice. I don't know. I'm making $15 an hour, uh, working eight hours, eight hours a day tax. I fucking hate taxes. Like I would bust my ass. I would make money. <laughs> they would take like a third of it. And I was like, God damn it. Like I was getting so pissed off. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I, I did that for a month and a half, two months, uh, made enough money, ended up going back to Serbia, bought a ticket, came back. Uh, the, the citizenship that was supposed to be finished, like ended up, like, like I said, like a paper was missing. So I'd again, resubmit all the paperwork. So that couldn't be finished by the second transfer window, the winter transfer window. So I ended up getting the contact with another guy from Cleveland. He knows another connection. They ended up finishing me a contract in the second division in Serbia, another club. Supposed to go to that club again last week of the transfer window. Same day I'm supposed to go to that club, my grandpa from America passes away. So I'm like... I'm like, dude, mm. like this might be a sign. Like, I'm not supposed to go. So I call the guy. I'm like, listen, I'm gonna take a bus. I want to come down. I sign the contract, but I had a good relationship with my grandpa, so I was like, I need to go to the, I need to go to the funeral. Like, can I sign the contract, go there for a few days, and just fly back? And he goes, you have two options. And this time, I can speak Serbian like decently, well, not decently well, but like fucking at least like sixty percent, seventy percent. And he was like, he's like, listen, you have two options. You either sign the contract, you don't go to the funeral, or you go to the funeral, you don't have a contract. So, again, like, I'm waiting a year, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me, dude. Like, again, this, like, situation. But, like I said, I just started to listen to my intuition, like, just kind of lead in my path because I didn't want anyone to say, you should do this, you should do this. At the end of the day, I'll make the final decision, and that is going to be, like, and I can live with myself if I make the decision. If someone else – like says go do this go do that yeah. then it's like you know what i mean like and i do that and I, and and i end up not having success i'll be mad at myself for listening to them right so my intuition was always going mm. to go back to the mm. funeral went back my mom and my dad were like you're fucking nuts if you go back to serbia and try to play soccer i'm like i have a, i have like enough money for a few more months to go live there so i ended up finding some guy he, he had a hostel hostel but he had a private room in the hostel close to like a good location where like a lot of like it's one of the richer areas in, in Belgrade so I was like I'll give you 253 like over there at that time 250 300 euros a month you can find a really good apartment a month so I ended up giving the guy 250 euros a month and was sleeping in a hostel basically so I would get like a French guy coming in and I get Russian people coming in Ukrainian guys like sometimes a guy would even like he would leave the hostel to like for, to go to his like weekend house and he would just let me run the hostel basically. So like I was running the thing because <laughs> I got really like close with him. So he's a good dude. He's a good dude. So he would always help me out and stuff. So um, eventually I keep going to that cafe where I met that guy the first day I came to Serbia. So once I finish the citizenship, I'll be like, yo, yeah, I got the citizenship. You're connected. Put, put me somewhere. I'll fucking sort it out. So I started, I ended up started training with like this third division club over there just to stay fit. Um, go, so it's around May, I would say one guy comes into that cafe and his uncle was like the head honcho of this one club. It's called Partizan. It's like one of the biggest clubs in Eastern Europe. His uncle for like 25 years, pretty much ran that club. And he was like, listen, my, my family's pretty strong here in Serbia. He goes, I can get you a trial, but everything else is up to you. So I said, perfect. So I was still waiting. Third division in Serbia was a third division club. But that club has produced, like, I don't know if you know who Mitrovic is from Fulham. He's the forward from yeah. Fulham. Mm -hmm. He's playing at that club. At that time, Partiza, maybe 10 years ago, they had the best school, soccer school, other than Ajax in all of Europe. So me going in there was like it's a big deal you know what i mean so i was like dude just let me yeah. let me go let me go i'll sort it out so um i finished the citizenship about a week before i ended up going on trial it was like perfect timing right so i go on trial with this club 
uh, I think I, I don't know if I took a bus or I took a taxi. I forget. I don't even know how I got there. So the guy was like, listen, the coach is like a really, he's done really well for himself. He's a, he's coaching one of the biggest teams in Serbia right now. Uh, he's like, listen, we're looking for a center back. If you do well, we'll see. I told him, he's like, when was the last time you played? I said, I haven't played in like a year. I think it was like at that time, it was like a year and a half. So I kind of like, I was training. I told him I trained, but I didn't have like a club for like a year and a half. So <laughs> he goes, all right, let's try it out. So I go up the first training. I just fucking kill it. Like I just wreck it. I was 25 at the time. Second training, it was like a pre He goes, he goes, how long you haven't played? I was like a year. He goes, and this was all in Serbian because I could speak it decently well at the time. So then second, after the second day, he's like, listen, you're with us six months play here. And then after that, go somewhere in the first division in Serbia. So, uh, I was like, all right, perfect. So I ended up kind of having like a knee injury. So I didn't play the first few games. Um, and then was with that third division club and we played two cup games. One of the cup games was against the first division team. It was called Vozdovac. The forward played for in Shakhtar Donetsk in Ukraine. And he was like the, like the best goal scorer in the Ukrainian league. And at that time, the Ukrainian league was bringing in some like big ballers because there's a lot of money in the Ukrainian league. So I did really well against him. Was like the best player uh, against the first division team. And we won the game. Crazy enough, my penalty, it was like we get, we got, went into a penalty shootout. And I shot a penalty. The goalie blocked the penalty. Eventually the ball, he like was celebrating. The ball rolled over across the line. And then the next... <laughs> And then the next, it's, there's a video. I'll see if I can send it to you or something. I don't even know. So, and then the next, the next, the next time the goalie saved it, the, our goalie saved the shot and we, we scored. So we went, we moved on, which is crazy. We beat a first division team. So this, I was the oldest guy on the team. I was 25. These are all kids. So Partizan, that second team, they're all, they're yeah. all about breeding their, their, their homegrown players and selling them off. That's like basically Partizan's the best in like one of the best teams in Eastern Europe to do that. So, Next game, in the cup game, we played against, uh, it's called this one team, it's called Chukorichki. Again, it's a first division team. The forward was bought by Manchester City for 3 million euros. Uh, the left back eventually ended up going to Lazio. And the midfielder was, like, bought out by, like, a first division, like, Italian team. The left back was is playing, like, the Russian first division. Yeah, like, or the left center back is playing, like, Russian first division. Like, it was, like, the team was stacked, right? So... I was like, perfect. If I do well, people are going to see me. It's good. It's good opportunity for me to showcase myself. So eventually, we lost one nothing. But like everyone was like, you were the player of the match. I ended up getting put out in the newspaper. Had an interview. Uh, they were like, who's this guy? So that kind of opened up my world. So eventually, I got uh, about two, two, three, uh, two, three days later, I got contacted by one of the biggest agents in Serbia. His name is Zoran Stojinovic. His director contacted me. Uh, he had Boyan Krkic in Barcelona. He had, uh, he had Barcelona. He sold Marco Grujic in Liverpool. Uh, he was, he's probably like one of the biggest managers ever come out of Eastern Europe. So he came to watch me go play one game in like against this, it's this one team called Ofka Belgrade. They have a really big history in Serbia. It was a good game. Uh, I played very well. The next day calls me up for coffee. He goes, you're, you can play you play a very high level. I want you to sign with me. I said, listen, I'm not going to sign with you unless I have something concrete. He gave me three offers basically where I could just sign with any first division team I wanted to. Like, he's like, you got this team, you got this team, you got this team, pick. So then I was like, getting to the point, I was like, well, fuck, I got to make a decision now. So I called the guy who hooked me up um, with – Part, with the teleoptic, like Partizan, like their the team, like when I met the guy in the cafe, I said, I got to know what the situation is with this Partizan team. Because if they want me, that's like the biggest team in Serbia. I would rather go there than go to all these these other teams in the first division. So I called them. That guy called yeah. called the sporting director. He goes, no, he's going, he's going, he's coming with us. He's got a contract. We're looking for a center back. Don't worry about it. So I, event I eventually rejected all these offers. There's one guy who wanted to send me to Ukraine as well to play with this. It's called this football ski. It's this uh, football team, Zoria. And they play in the Europa League pretty much every year. So it was like, I'm jumping from third division and trying to go like, that's, I did really well for myself in Serbia. The two, three months that I played, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, I don't even know who to believe at this point. 
You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, listen, I'm a loyal guy. The guy who brought me to that one academy, Partizan, that team, I'm like, I'm sticking with them. They told me it's it's a done deal. It's a done deal. So I'm like, uh, it's winter break. I'm practicing. I'm training. I ended up seeing like Partizan sign this guy. Partizan sign this guy. And I'm like, no one's contacting me. Mm. And I call the guy. I'm like, dude, what's going on? So apparently like the coach maybe had some connection. I don't know who, what, what the deal was. He didn't want to bring me to preseason. So I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. So I'm like, so I rejected all these offers, right? Thinking I'm going to go to preseason, sign a contract with this team. And at the end of the day, I didn't even get, I didn't even get signed by that team. So I call the guy, the big agent, the big agent. I'm like, listen, if you still have those offers, I'd like to take them up. All those teams found center backs. And like I said, in Serbia, if they sign a center back and you miss the opportunity, they're not going to go sign another guy for a lot of money. You know what I mean? They're going to invest in that guy that they invested in. Yeah. So I'm like, you got to be fucking, I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. So I, so I, I eventually, so listen to this. So I, I'm training with the second team still, and I ended up getting sick for about a week. Right. The, the whole, and I didn't have like, a, I didn't really have a contract with that team. So they all thought that I just left. They all thought I was like going to this first division team and stuff. So there was like chaos. So eventually I come back and I get offered a contract with Partiza, but like no preseason, nothing. And I'm like, well, it's better to sign that, have some money. I was playing for free, dude. I was playing for free, basically. Just trying to get my foot in the door. Right? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. better to have money, sign with a big team. It's good on your resume, right? So I was like, screw it. I'll go sign with this team. I ended up signing with Partizan. Ended up getting in the newspaper. The like one of like third, fourth page of sports journal. Like my face is just there. Like an American Serbian roots comes to Serbia, ends up having success with soccer, had an interview. It was like, they did a really good article on me. It was like, I was very happy about that. So Corona happens, no soccer for like six months. Right. So I'm like, what's going on? You know, I had the contract, all that stuff. So the summertime comes um, and I get offered by two teams in the first division. So I ended up declining both of them because I still had a contract with Partizan and I was there. I was going to be there for a full year. And I was just like, just kind of saw how the situation was going. And I declined the teams, but eventually like they signed two other players, center backs after I declined the offers, I was like, Jesus Christ, I might have just dug myself a bigger hole. So contact the one that one big agent again. And I'm like, listen, like his director, he calls a couple of those teams that contact me. He's like, all right, we can get you a contract with this one team. It's called Bachka Palank. First division, Serbia, good team. This like, you know what I mean? Like the pay is all, it's all always on time. That's an, that's an issue that you can have in Eastern Europe. Like sometimes you just don't get paid like every third month, four yeah. months, every other month, every month. It, it depends on the club, you know? So I ended up going to that club, mm. signed a contract. Uh, did, dude, I had six coaches in eight months there. So it was just like, Oh my God. So it was like, I remember like the first few games. I'm like, I'm not cocky, dude. I know who I am. Like I, I thought I was the best center back there after the second or third day, and I'm just waiting for my chance. Waiting, waiting, I'm not getting it. And I'm calling my agent. I'm like, dude, I'm playing two friendly games with the best player. I'm like, dude, what's going on? Like, there's something's not right. You know what I mean? Something's, like, fishy. So, eventually, two of the center backs, one of them pulled his hammy, other one pulled, uh, or he had, like, yellow cards or whatever. So, eventually, they let me play the ninth game against this big team. Like, we need to win this game. Dude, I have never played so well in my life. Like, I'm hitting long balls, like, Ramos on a dart. I'm, like, reading the game. I'm carrying the ball. <laughs> like, I – like, there's games when you're just, like, unconscious. Like, I was just – so I ended up getting – put in the newspaper as, like, player of the game. And after that, five, six games in a row, I'm playing, and I'm doing really well. I'm playing, like, consistently first division Serbia. Very, It's a good league. A lot, like, if you, it's – it's in Serbia, if you do – if you're one of the top six, seven teams, eight teams – you can definitely go play in the MLS. Like, if you do well, if that team – like, for me, if I, that was my point. Like, I just want to play somewhere and try to get back into the MLS, you know. But the team wasn't yeah. at success. Um, it just kept changing coaches. One of the coaches came in, and I thought I was doing well. And 
I think he knew a guy from from before, and he just kind of took me out of the lineup. So I was like, it wasn't kind of really based off play or anything, but ended up playing against the Red Star Belgrad that year. They played in the Champions League against uh, PSG, uh, Bayern, and I ended up playing in that against them, and I did really well that game. And the next game, the coach didn't put me in again, and eventually, I don't know. Maybe he had a disagreement with the with the the owner of the club, and they let him go. So going into the second half of the season, I'm like, one guy called me for Kazakhstan to go play in Kazakhstan, and dude, like I had no idea like what that is, but I'm telling you right now, they got money over there. Like it's like oil money, I think. So like you go <laughs> over there and like cheap living, but like you can come out and be clean at least like seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year. You know what I mean? So like. Just think about it like you go play soccer yeah. four or five years, dude, and you come out of that. You got if you like smart, you're like you come out, you come back to America, you got three hundred thousand dollars in the bank account. You know what I mean? So it's like, like some of these countries, like you wouldn't believe it, but they got money, dude. So, <laughs> so I yeah, so I yeah, so I eventually I was still with my agent, so I talked to him. He said, "No, we'll, we'll stay in Serbia." I was like, "All right, we'll stay in Serbia." <laughs> new coach, new director. Again, it was just kind of like some phony stuff was going on and I'm still waiting for my shot to play after four games. That guy got released a uh, new coach came in one again. One of the center backs had yellow cards. I get to play in the game again. I was the player of the game. Like I, this is like in the newspapers. Like I'm telling, like, I'm not trying to be arrogant. Like every time I had to play well, I, I knew when I had to play well and I played well, like you're, you, you'll have only a few opportunities mm. up as an American player. When you have an opportunity, you have to take advantage like, they will not give you two or three chances. I'm telling you right now. Like, if you play bad two games, you're fucked. I'm telling you right now. So, like, you can't. Like, you can't. You can't play bad, dude. You can't. So, yeah, uh, I, did, I get it. Yeah. did well and ended up playing 21 games uh, that season. Uh, had a contract for another year with the club. And then one team from North Macedonia. North Macedonia that, that summer went into the Euros. So I was like, shit, they had, they're probably going to be a lot of scouts, a lot of agents maybe looking at that uh, team or that country for soccer players. So the one team actually bought out my contract from Serbia, and I ended up going to that team in Macedonia. Was doing really well, uh, 21 games. The team, we were like bordering promotion relegation. Uh, played every game, 21 minutes, tw- uh, 90 minutes, 21 games, four or five times, team of the week. Uh, 21st game, we're playing against this one team from Macedonia. I go for a, a header. Goalie comes in between and just busts up my hand, and I just break it. Fifth minute of the game, in two spots, my metacarpal. Ended up playing the rest of the game, 90 minutes with a broken hand. Probably the worst pain I ever had in my life, and I ended up playing the whole game. Mm-hmm. Um, four or five weeks later, just the situation with the club, maybe my – decision making I ended up going home to get the surgery uh and then after that was waiting for offers had a couple of offers Lithuania something something in Serbia second division but there just was not any money and I knew I was a really good player and I just didn't want to be people not kind of like appreciating my skill level and all that stuff especially in Macedonia and Serbia like yes yeah. the teams weren't that I played with weren't doing well but at an individual level like I was kind of just keeping those teams above, you know what I mean, above ground. Because oh, the yeah. first the first four or five games I, I didn't play after I broke my hand, I think we got outscored 15 to nothing or 15 to 1. And every game that I played was like tied, 2-1, one, one nothing. You know what I mean? Like it was like close. So at a mm-hmm. professional level, if you're a player and you're, you're making a difference of like two, three goals a game, like that's saying something. You know what I mean? So – so I was yeah. – uh, eventually I just kind of rejected a couple of those offers. I thought I was going to get something better. And then four or five months, I didn't even have a team. So this was like the past – so that was from about July to January. Didn't have a club. Ended up going back to Partizan's second team because I have a good relationship with a lot of those guys just to practice. Um, there was a couple other guys mm-hmm. that were training with me that had really good careers. One guy was just played at the second division in the Bundesliga, and he was training with me every day. Other guy was playing in Dortmund. He played for Dortmund like 10 years ago. Played in German Bundesliga. 
he had offers, but he just didn't like, I don't know, maybe it was because the World Cup, like teams weren't giving money out or something. You know what I mean? So it was like, he didn't want to sign anything that was like undervalued for him. So eventually like we all did that and we ended up kind of like screwing ourselves because like we didn't have any other offers after that. So it was like, so we ended up all training together and we all ended up finding teams after like six months. So it was like our persistence ended up uh, paying out, paying off. But uh, yeah, so then I went back home for a couple months, drove Uber, made really good money doing Uber. This team called me. The reason why I came to this team in Montenegro, remember the guy that I told you about? that I met the first day because the taxi driver screwed up the street. He was connected with the sports director in, in the cafe. Yeah. He was connected with a sports. Mm. He called me, he goes, go to this club. I actually rejected the offer. The first time they called me again, gave me more money, money accepted the offer. So that the reason why I'm here in Montenegro is because the taxi driver screwed up the street the first day I was in Serbia. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, my whole story comes down to, Taxi driver screwing up the street the first day I was in Serbia, looking for directions. And at the weird, like, at, like, obviously, this isn't like if my grandpa didn't pass away that same day, like, who knows if I'd ever even have a contract with Partizan, have the opportunities that I've had. So it's just kind of like it's been a whirlwind. It's kind of like a film, like, a, like I got. I can get into like in depth more, but like, I just, I don't know what I can say. Like some things I can't say, you know what I mean? Like just like with the team, yeah. like all that. Yeah. 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 So that's kind of my story, man. It's just been up and down. It's been up and down. I thought I individually, I'm happy with how I played. Ended up uh, coming here in mass in this Montenegro. The team was in last place. First two games we won uh, first, first game. It was actually my first game after, even after the surgery and everything after 11 months, uh, and in the 70th minute, 70th wow. minute, the ref came up to me. He's like, you're, you've been the player of the game. So it was like after the first game, after 11 months. So I think a thing with like, like a lot of directors, coaches and all that stuff, like, oh, you gotta be like, in sh- yeah, you have to be in shape. I completely agree with that. But dude, you either, sometimes you either have it or you don't, you know what I mean? Like so many coaches now, mm-hmm. I think this, is the problem as well with, uh, Pep, I think Pep doesn't let his players like live off instinct anymore. Does that make sense? He may like joysticks them around. And that's why I think when it comes to the final, yeah. they're thinking too much and they're not, they don't know how to win the game by instinct. That's why I love, I think Mourinho for me, he gets a lot of rap, but the dude wins, dude. Wherever he goes, he fucking wins. And I think it's just because he's more, let's just mm. win the game and whatever you, whatever you do to win the game. But that comes from like, a primal part of your brain where it's like, I got to fight for this. And it's your instinct takes over. Does that make sense? So that's why mm. like a lot yeah. of people are like, well, you haven't played in six months. Isn't that like, dude, I came here first game ref comes up to me after that. I was like two times team of the week. And I scored a goal after like the fourth game, fifth game in my head. And like people and people are like complimenting me at how well. And, and I tell them like, I was driving Uber for two months. I haven't played a game in 11 months. But, like, I've been training basketball, baseball, soccer since I was five years old. Do you think I am going to lose everything that I have had in my entire life after six months? Instincts, reading the game, the uh, way I think about the game, no chance, dude. You know what I mean? So, yeah. one thing I like, yeah. if, you, if you have experience, like, that's the thing that pisses me off sometimes. Like, oh, you haven't played this, that. Like, dude, like. It's like you either have it or you don't. Obviously, like fitness, like conditioning, you have to have the conditioning. But if you buckle down after six weeks, you can be like a freaking stud. You can get back into like top physical condition unless you are like 15 kilos or 30 pounds overweight. That's going to be tough. But if you're like two or three kilos or six pounds overweight, dude, after three weeks, you'll drop that. If you're if you're an athlete, you've been training your whole life. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, man, that's kind of yeah, that's kind of my whole story. That's kind of my whole story about how I ended up kind of paving my own way in through uh, into Europe, into Eastern Europe, just kind of by by chance, by having the courage and just believing in yourself. Because there's a lot of fucking times, man, where you will be down. I'm telling you, especially here, they look at you as an American, and they, I think, honestly, they will try to drop you if you don't play well enough. So that's kind of. 
that's just kind of so believe in yourself at all times and uh just have the courage to listen to yourself because you know yourself the best i would say and don't listen to other people so that's that's kind of my whole story from europe yeah. obviously i'm just gonna, i talk i just talked a really long time but it's a long story so i, <laughs> I just wanted to hit all hit all yeah you know yeah I, mean? I agree. yeah yeah I, I appreciate it i think i think your story kind of hits on all the parts that seem to always come to life in a story of a guy who goes over to Europe and does it himself, right? It kind of has that perfect mixture of, like you said, self-belief. It also has a, a relentless attitude towards the game of constantly training, constantly trying to get better, constantly trying to work on your craft. That belief in yourself, that willing to just go and take a risk like that. Like I think it sometimes is something that gets overlooked a little bit. How how difficult that is for, you know, it, you just go and talk to the normal person who works a nine to five in America and say, Hey, would you be willing to go and jump on a plane to Serbia tomorrow? Like, right. I think that sometimes gets overlooked. Like that's a huge, a courageous thing. But then also like that, that little bit of spring, like the last piece of the recipe is that little sprinkle of luck, right? Like you, you meet the right person at the right time, you get connected to the right person at the right time. And then all of a sudden, like those things come together. Um, I have to imagine for you, like there were just in listening to your story, I feel like there were so many different emotions that you must have had through this entire time, right? Like in the beginning, you're just, you want a chance and, and that's all you're fighting for. And then all of a sudden you get that chance and now you're having success. And now like the kind of picture is changing and there's offers and there's big teams and there's money. And like, it changed so quickly, right? From just, I need a chance to now like, oh, now I have decisions to make. And then too, like you said, there's been injuries and then you were home for a different points. Like throughout that, how did you kind of develop a mindset to just keep going and, and keep dealing with whatever cards were dealt to you? Or were there ever moments where you felt like, yo, fuck this. Like, this is hard. <laughs> like, I mean, dude, I mean, I'm like thinking I like, I swear to God, like I was team of the week fucking scored a goal. Like I'm like thinking now, like, <laughs> hard. you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like a constant battle. I'll tell you one thing that I, so when I, I'm going to get back to the, I had the injury issue, injury bug, I would say in college, uh, the concussion thing mm -hmm. and like really bad migraines. Uh, and I didn't, if I'm being honest with you, like the, one of the doctors gave me like antidepressants from it. Like he gave me an anti for like the migraines. Mm -hmm. I, ended up kind of, I ended up getting into a weird spot mentally uh, had a, had a teacher in college that kind of like was really big on diet, different, like, dude, everyone thought this guy was crazy, and, but he was just so passionate that I was like, this guy's got to know something that no one knows. Right. So he ended up giving me like a meal plan basically yeah. that's taking out sugar, which is like crazy to think, right. Milk that was like pasteurized, anything that was processed, I took out, dude, I'm telling you right now, after two or three days, all that pressure that I had from my migraines, like started going away. Right. So eventually wow. I kept going down the rabbit hole, medical system, all that stuff, kind of like really honed in on my diet. Uh, and I started meditating. I started meditating. I did that around when I was 20. Uh, it, was, it was called this binaural beats. So basically it's like uh, your brain works on different brainwave frequencies. Uh, there's like four different brainwave mm -hmm. frequencies. The... It's alpha, beta, delta, gamma, um, like these Buddhist monks or whatever, the people that have like the most peace, happiness, they're like, they'll like tap into this delta brainwave, but most of the time they're living in alpha. Alpha brainwave state is like presence. It's in the moment, right? So if you're living at like, I think, I believe it's beta, your, your emotions and your thoughts are more controlling, are controlling your way of life rather than you are controlling mm. your thoughts, Right. So I think the big thing for me through meditation was just like bashing all of the walls that I like created in my mind. Does that make sense? So like when someone's like, yeah. So when someone's like, dude, like you can't go play over there. Right. Well, why, why can't I? Right. Like why does he have that limiting belief and why is he putting that on me? Right. So like I would see I would see other guys like playing professional soccer here. I'm like, well, if they can do it, why can't I do it? You know what I mean? So 
but like some people yeah. are brought it's not it's like your parents they're not at fault like but they're not conscious like it's just a way of becoming conscious of your thought patterns so every time i am mm. in a situation where i'm like dude this is like kicking my ass or like this like i'm done like i can't i would become conscious of like my thought pattern and i just try to like bring my awareness back into my body or like breathing and be like what's the best route or like how can i consciously make the right decision at that moment right so I go in every fight. I go in every game. I'm like, I'm gonna be the best player. I don't care who I'm playing against. That's the way I think, and it's and I built that progressively, and I became aware of like those self limiting beliefs through my meditation. Because like you will say like I'm gonna be the best, but then it, you always have something that comes back. You're like, no, you're gonna suck. But then you're like, but then even when that negative mentality starts yeah. coming in, you got to become aware of it. And it's your ego in a way. It's all, you're all, you're always battling with your ego. So then, eventually, when you become medit- when you become conscious of your unconscious thoughts, I would say that was the liberation that kind of like that liberated me to become. I didn't fear anymore, right? So it was not like mm. it's not like I it's not like I didn't fear like death or something. You know what I mean? Like I think it's very, but it was just like I didn't fear the path like where it would take me because I always knew that like I'd end up yeah like I'd end up being happy with how I am proud of myself and that's it and I could always end up going home right in America or whatever like that's a safe spot for me mm. so that's kind of in like that kind of was the way I especially in Eastern Europe like the the lifestyle is cheap right so the way I look at it as like a soccer player you're, you're a business right? You're your own entrepreneur. You're a company. So for me in Eastern Europe, Mm -hmm. this lifestyle, I could spend 600, 700 euros a month and live. Okay. In America, 600, 700 euros a month or dollars, like that's just for gas. Right. So like I was like, the cost of living is like here, the amount of money I looked at it from a financial aspect was low. But the potential, because Serbia, big country, sold a lot of players, guys playing in Serbia, was very high. So whenever you're starting a business and it's like the the like the amount of money you have to put into the business is low, but the but the ceiling is very high. Like why wouldn't you invest? So that's that's why for me, Eastern yeah. Europe was one of the better places because in in Germany, dude, everyone goes to Germany, everyone. Like all the guys with yeah. passports, Croatia, Spain, all, they're all going to. Eastern Europe, Serbia, like not a lot of people are going because the money's not good. Plus it's not EU. Plus you got that mentality. Like it's tough, dude. You gotta be, you gotta be like a motherfucker to, to make it here. I'm telling you right now, dude, like you can't, you gotta be mm-hmm. like, you gotta deal with a lot of shit. So I was like, screw it. Like I'm prepared mentally. I know what I can do. I know where I, how I can play. And that's kind of just the, that's kind of how I thought of it, man. That's, I think meditation was a thing that, I did it eight years ago and I live my life now pretty meditatively. Like anything you do is meditative. Like when you go practice hour and a half, no phone, yeah. concentrate, that is like flow. It's like you're living in the moment. So I try to, I try not to look at my phone as much. I try Instagram, all, you know what I mean? So it's, it's not, it's not easy to be meditative yeah. at A's age, but I try to do it as much as I can. And I, that me becoming conscious of my unconscious patterns was the reason why I think I had so much success. I mean, I've had success here in Europe. It kept going after all the bullshit that I've had to deal with and all that stuff. So, yeah. And not having your self belief fall because then dude, like once you get cut, they don't take you, they don't do this, dude, you just can spiral quick, man. It, you go yeah. super quick. Yeah. And if you be, and if you're not conscious of that, dude, you'll dig yourself a hole and you can't get out of it. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of why yeah. for me, meditation, I mean, it's, it helped me. Yeah. I mean, it helped me so much, man. It helped me a lot. So that's kind of, I would, I would say that's one of the things that really progressed my career and myself as a person. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm aware of the ego. I, I, it has its role in life because as a player, you have to have the ego, but you cannot let it like control you. You know yeah. what I mean? Once it controls you, then I think I, 
you're you're forgetting like the reason why you're playing soccer. Like as a kid, like you did it because you liked it. But if your ego takes over, then you'll start buying cars, you'll start chasing women, you'll start doing this. But you're like, dude, I do it because I like it. You know what I mean? I like the physical, the the competition. You know what I'm saying? And being with the boys. You know what I mean? That's like, that's always like, yeah. that's it. So yeah, man, that's I would say that's part of the reason why I had success was the meditation aspect of it. So yeah. Yeah, I think like players that I've come across just, you know, playing with and also speaking to lots of players like yourself, it's one thing I think I've noticed that like one thing, a lot of ones that have gone on to do, you know, professional things, play for big teams, what have you, is like that mindset sort of becomes impenetrable at a certain point. And it takes a while to kind of build that up. But it's like you said, if you go on a trial and a club or a coach or somebody tells you like, listen, you're never going to play at the professional level. Right. Like there's a lot of players out there or a lot of people out there that, like you said, it can then spiral them out of control and they, maybe they believe it, but like, there's just a certain level of, I don't know if like arrogance is the right word or just like, maybe like, like a certain amount of delusion almost where like, I don't care that this professional coach has just told me I'm not good enough. Right. I'm still going to show up again tomorrow because I know that I am good enough. Right. Like it, it's, it's always something that I'm curious and I ask players about because it's like, you know, there's certain things that you want to take on board from people, but there's also, I feel like so much that you want to just drown out and just kind of focus on what you believe in your own head. Yeah. So I like, even when like someone's like telling you like, Oh, you, you're not going to make it or this, that, like you have other resources in your past for example, that were like, where someone was like, dude, you can play at this and they've seen it. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're not, the way I always look yeah. at it is like, I'm not going to take the opinion of one guy. You know what I mean? Like I have the re other resources throughout my past. I remember when I was 18, this guy, I was playing with this one summer team. His father, we were sponsored by Aston Villa, the Premier League team. And his father was like okay. in England. He went, he had like lunch with Sir Alex Ferguson he he uh, watched Villa train, Austin Villa train, and then he ended up getting the sponsor for, with from, like, the Premier League team, which is crazy. So I ended up going to play with that team in the summer. And the guy came up to me after the second game, and he, seen, he went to Premier League training. He said, he's like, there's this one guy, I forgot the American name. He was playing at Villa, right, at that time. He's like, dude, you're better than him. You know what I mean? Like, you saw, I have been unfortunate. I think injuries, the concussion thing really kind of, like, halted my uh career. i'm fine now i haven't had one in like six years like i kind of figure that out from changing my diet mm -hmm. and all that stuff i do a lot of cold showers that really help me as well um like prevention wise and i think like i've had all out of like one of my coaches well from at cleveland state he played it for borussia mönchengladbach and he was like dude you can play so like i all these guys that saw a different side of me at the professional level like at, at for a yeah. longer period of time who played at a, maybe a higher level even the coaches that i or whatever that i was associated with those guys gave me the resources or the confidence three four years before even like i got released by houston to say all right well i know i'm good enough i just got to get back to that level does that make sense so it's like how do i get back to that level or how yeah. do i get beyond that level so that like you can't like everyone has their own taste like all coaches have their own taste like they like different flavors one guy's gonna like mm. vanilla the other guy's gonna like chocolate you know what i mean and it's just like you gotta find the yeah. guy that likes your flavor and if he does perfect and he can help you build a career better that's like awesome go for it and i'm not like when it, when you're younger you're like i remember when i was like 19 18 20 whatever like dude i my ego was through the roof i would always like get mad at other players that have like success over me and all that stuff and it was just like now i'm at the point like i know how much of a grind it is dude i want everyone like my time will come i've i've done it like i've probably had like a four or five professional year career like a years playing professionally it's like you know what i mean like i've i've seen it all i've played against really good players yeah. and it's just like Whatever happens, happens at that moment because I need to learn something. You know what I mean? So my time will come. If this guy has success, good for him. You know what I mean? I'm, like, more happy now when I see someone else who's gone through the ringer and comes out successful. Like, 
because I know how hard it is. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm happy. I'm happy. If he worked his butt off, did it himself, and ended up making good money, I'm like, I'm probably more happy that he had success than I'm happy that if I had that success. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. That's just kind yeah. of, I don't even know. What, I don't even, I fucking forgot where even, like, what even the question was. I just kind of went over. <laughs> no. No, it's okay. I think I think that could be a, definitely a great point for anyone to take away. It's, I'm sure I'm something I've spoken about too, but like you have to find like it's crazy how much football can change because you can be in a situation where like you're in a team, you're not playing, or you know the coach doesn't have doesn't favor you or whatever. Like everything can seem like it's against you, or you can even go and go on trials and get cut and ask time and time again. And then you can fast forward like six months, eleven months, all of a sudden. You're in a team, a coach believes in you. It's a system that works for you. You're playing your, like, and it's, it's just, it's, you're playing the exact same sport. Like right. nothing's changed. They haven't changed the ball or the pitch or anything like that. It's just, you change a couple of factors and all of a sudden it's kind of revitalized your career or made you found that love again in the game. It's like, it's just, you know, I'm sure you can attest to that. Like, right. You're at home driving Uber and then all of a sudden, okay, boom, now I'm back and I'm playing again at a top level. And I've got guys telling me, Hey, you're the best player on the park. Like it's yeah, football moves so quickly. So don't, yeah. if you, if you feel stuck, like I know it's hard to be patient, but sometimes you just, you need to be patient. Yeah, man. I think, I think a lot of a, a big problem nowadays as well as like, if you haven't made it from like 18 to 22 to 23, like your career's over. You know what I mean? Especially here. Like, dude, there's so many things now through diet, through training. Dudes can play. I'm telling you right now, you can play to your 35, no problem. So just think about, like, you're 22, 23, you're a good talent. You, just, you haven't even gotten looked at. And you're going to quit because you're like, you're like, oh, well, I'm too old now. I don't really, you know what I mean? Obviously, motivation, all that stuff, it's a different factor. Like, if you're not motivated anymore, okay. But if you're just going to do it because you want to quit because you're like, oh, I still am. So I've made the big bucks or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, man. Like, you can play till you're 35. You really take if you're if you're committed, you're disciplined, like, and you take care of your body, you can play to your 35. I think no problem nowadays. So I I always I'm always about like yeah. I think like in especially in Western Western society, like through college, like it's just kind of like it's very system based. I'm kind of like like tw- like my, a lot of my buddies after college, 22, 23, like all right, let's get a job. All right, and then after job, what's the next move? All right, let's go find a girlfriend, a wife. Let's get a baby. By the time you're 28, 29, 30, you're like, ah, you know what I mean? Like, ah, I wish I could have done that. I wish I could have done this. I'm not saying, like, a lot of people think that. But, like, dude, I think for, like, 20 to 30, just fucking try everything. So, like, why wouldn't you try as many things as you can from 20 to 30? Start a bit, you know what I'm saying? So, from the football aspect, that's that was kind of my reasoning. I was like, dude, I'm 24. Remember, I was like, I was going to quit. I was going to end up being a coach. This one Serbian guy, big, he's like a huge coach in Cleveland, in the Cleveland area, like the women's soccer. He's like developed so many good players. And he watched me play at Akron. And he was, I was like 24. And the one Romanian guy that I was helping out, like his his own club, he was like trying to get me to get the D license, the C, the whatever, like all those licenses. And I really like coaching. Like I, like coaching is a totally different thing than playing, man. But it was, so the one serving guy was like, he looked at me, he's like, dude, like I was telling him, yeah, I'm just going to get my license. Like, dude, why? He goes, you're 23, 24. He's like, go play. He goes, you play center back, go play. And I remember, I remember like literally sit, I remember like this happened five years ago. I remember the conversation. Like it was like yesterday. I remember where I was sitting. I remember where we were. And it was just like, it was just like something like the way he said it was just so nonchalant. Like, normally people are like, well, you know what I mean? Like, weigh the options, this, that. He was just, just go play. Like, he's just go, like, it was just like, yeah, you know what I mean? Just go try. You know what I mean? So I was like, so I was like, fuck it, you're right, dude. So I was like, that kind of was like, that literally like five second, like, hiccup in my life was like, you're fucking right. Let's go. You know what I mean? So you get inspiration from like so many different. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and fast forward to now, and now you know it's it's crazy to look back at like we've just done this in this kind of chat here and and look at your career. Uh, I think maybe a good place for us to maybe wrap it because I know I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, it would be you spoke about kind of that inv- that investment, right? Like you look at yourself as a business and kind of 
hey, I can build myself here in, in this league and these kind of in this level and then maybe, you know, push it to the what's the what's the selling point, right? Or how do I increase my value? What's next kind of in my career? As you look at your career, what do you kind of see in the future for yourself? Do you have goals or things that you want to kind of achieve? Or is football just sort of like, hey, I'm living in the moment, I'm day to day and and I want to train and play and kind of do my best on a day to day basis? Uh I mean like back in the day I, I like, I put like all the goals like on a wall and I kind of like ended up just like, I remember I said I was going to get like drafted, ended up getting drafted, wanted to speak a different language, ended up speaking Serbian. You know what I mean? Like I, a lot of things that I put on the wall, like ended up happening kind of like, I know I just kind of like now live more in the moment. I haven't really like written down my goals. I know it's good to write down the goals and all that stuff, but I just try to take it day by day, I would say more rather than like when I was younger, like more striving. Like I, now I'm just like, all right, well, let's be the best at this training. Let's do this at the game. Let's be focused. Some like mess up. Let's, you know what I mean? And then like whatever happens mm-hmm. kind of like happens because it's just like, maybe someone's going to see you at this one game, you do really well. And then that's a stepping stone to get like a contract, a good contract. So I don't know, man. Like, I, I haven't really written out my goals, but I really, if I'm being honest with you, I really like living in Eastern Europe. I have a lot of good friends in Serbia. Uh, mm. My whole family, like my blood, I mean, my bloodline is from, it's, it was called Yugoslavia. It was a, it was like a big country. Uh, it was Serbia, Croatia, North Macedonia, Bosnia, Montenegro, and Slovenia, and Kosovo, which is up to debate. Like there's political, if that's even a country or not. And that was all one country. So just imagine all like the the talent that has like come out of that this region, with soccer, the Croatians, the Serbians, the Slovenians, the Bosnians. Like there's just so much talent here, and I really and I just don't know why. Like it's just like my blood's from here, and I just really enjoy being here. I feel like I'm at home. I do like America. I appreciate America. Uh, I have a lot of good friends there as well. I think I appreciate America from the sy- systemic from a system aspect where if you are really hardworking and you are a good person and you save money and you want to, you are generally, you want to work, you can make a solid living. You can make a living. I know a lot of people here in Serbia or Montenegro, they'll be working their ass off for a month. Uh, Like for example, like my cousin, he was an orthopedic surgeon, 23, 24 years experience was making 700 euros a month in Belgrade, Serbia, which is, so it's like, you know what I mean? Like in a way, America is like, well, he, first of all, he wouldn't be making 700 euros a month. He's a doctor. He'd probably making a lot of money and he was a hardworking guy. So it was like, and he's still living like very tough. You know what I mean? And it was like, and like from the American aspect, it's like, like you can go like for me, like, dude, I worked Uber and I kind of half asked it and I made like six and a half, seven thousand dollars in my first month. You know what I mean? And it was like, you can't get that anywhere, dude. You know what I mean? Like, where are you going to find that? So that aspect, I would say America, but from like lifestyle and like, I really like it here. I want to do my career. I want to like have my career as long as I can stay healthy without hindering a team. You know what I mean? Like, I I don't want to just be the guy that's going to be like, I'm 34, 35 and just like just get paychecks because because I just need money. You know what I mean? Like I need money or sorry. I, yeah. Can you see me? No, oh, my, my battery, low power. Yeah. Just and I just don't want to, I don't want to be hindering the, the team. So as long as I can physically and mentally stay up to par and still play at a high level, then I'll mm-hmm. keep playing. But once I see that start to decline, then I'll be, I think I'll be calling it quits because I know at the level that I played at and I can play at. And once that drops, it'll probably be like really frustrating to me. I guess how I am. So if I can play as long as I can, I'll do it. Uh, I think physically I feel well, I feel good. I think just the problem here is just the, the fields and like the turfs and all that stuff. They're not like in the greatest condition. So I think that, Part, it's part of the reason probably why I had the muscle injury for the last game. It was a quad injury. I kind of pulled it, and I had to take a week off. But I don't know, man. I would, I would, I would like to make money. And I honestly, dude, maybe you think I'm crazy. Like, 
I like to have a place. The mountains here in Serbia and Montenegro and all these like these Eastern like it's beautiful, man. So I'd like to have like a weekend house or like somewhere I can. I'm kind of like a hippie in that way. Like I just kind of want to live, have a garden, have my own food, be like self sufficient, have a wife that like wants to have kids and just like, I like I'm I'm like I'm like that. You know what I mean? Like I I've lived in New York, seen LA, lived in Belgrade. Like I've seen it all, man. And it's just like. Now I'm at the point where I'm, yeah. I kind of want to have a family. I want to have family. Want to have kids. Want to have a wife, and I just want to have peace. And I think like if you can build a place like you kind of own heaven in the mountains where you have like your own garden. You pick it out. You have food for the day. You know what I mean. You don't have to work the nine to five. And I just don't. And I don't think I can do that. We'll see. Like where my life takes me. Like I say that. Like that's kind of my end goal. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Maybe I'll do that when I'm 40, mm. 50, but yeah. like maybe I'll be a coach. Maybe it's just kind of like, I'll just take everything as it goes. But yeah. So I just want to, I just want to keep playing soccer at the highest level I can. But once I see that level drop or I just feel like I just can't do it anymore, then I'll probably call it quits. So that's pretty much, that's kind of where I envision yeah. over the next, I'd say five, for like year to five years, 10 years, who knows? So yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the kind of the beautiful thing about like chasing something like this, like a career in football is it, it kind of forces you into that mindset of like so much of your football career is kind of out of your control, yeah. like where you just, you know, things happen and they are, you adjust and you kind of figure out the life that you want. And I think it's kind of, it's cool to see it then reflect in, in your just look at your outlook at life and like, you know, there's things I want to do, but also like, I'm going to kind of let life just come to me and, and what happens happens, you know? So I think it's awesome. It will be definitely cool for me as well to just watch you kind of in your career and, and see where you go next. I'm sure there'll be lots of more <laughs> adventures and journeys along the way as, a, as I'm sure you're geared up for, but I appreciate so much you taking the time and uh, it was awesome to, to just hear your story. No, thank you, man. I mean, I, I, I've spoken, like I've been on a couple of podcasts about like different things and, and stuff, but this is the first podcast that I've been in with, with soccer and all that stuff. So if I can help any kids or whatever, obviously, like if you want to link my Instagram or whatever, like if anyone has any questions as well, like yeah. help anyone out in any way, just, you know what I mean? Send me a text or whatever and, and all that stuff. But I appreciate you having me on and having the opportunity to tell my story and, helping people in any way. So appreciate it, man. That's it for this week. Thank you to Danilo for sharing his story, for coming out in the middle uh, of a season. That hasn't necessarily been the easiest for him, but I always appreciate when, when you know players take time out of their busy schedule to share their story. So I can't thank Danilo enough for that. I want to thank you guys as well for following along with the podcast I know there's been so much going on. I just had an update episode that talked about my football career. And, you know, I, I'm so happy to now continue to be able to share other people's other people's football careers and their stories as well. So continue to do all of the things, right? Subscribe on YouTube. If that's where you watch. Subscribe on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen. Follow along. Give us a rating and review, review if you like the show. If you want more content about the uh, podcast itself instagram and tiktok in the 11 pod that's where you want to go if you want content before anyone else receives it so if you want the episodes a day before anyone else gets it patreon.com slash in the 11 pod is the place in which you want to go if you can run that number up to 10 patrons then we will start to do weekly episodes for the patreon only in which i talk about my experience playing down in australia so if you want that to happen, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend and run that number way, way up. Once again, thank you to Danilo. Thank you to all of you guys out there. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.